Neighborhood, The Tonight Show, starring Donnie Carson. Donnie's guest host is Jay Leno. This is Doc Severson along with the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Jay and his guest, Bonnie Ray, comedian Carol Leifer, and author Roy Blunt Jr. And now, here. Day off. I guess the only people don't have the day off today are me and Jim Wright's attorney, huh? Gosh. <laughs> All have a nice Memorial Day, I hope? Yeah. yeah. Good. Do the barbecue thing, the whole thing. See, it's funny. Out here in L.A., they barbecue a little bit different. Here, just take a couple of briquettes, put them in the microwave. You know, take them. <laughs> oh, gosh. Actually, actually, I had a pretty uh, busy day yesterday. Whew. God, I spent the whole afternoon running all over town trying to rent that new Rob Lowe video. <laughs> Do you all know about this, huh? You know about the Lowe thing? Now, allegedly, at the Democratic convention last summer, Rob Lowe was videotaped having sex with two teenage girls. Now, you see, I know it was done at the Democratic convention because if you listen to the tape carefully, at the end, you can just hear Gary Hart say, cut. You know, so, you know it's a Democratic convention. Now, now, to be fair, Rob Lowe says he isn't guilty. See, apparently he's a little confused. See, he thought the law was the combined ages of the women had to be over 18, so... I can understand. <laughs> now, on to a more serious note. Now, here's something that really makes me mad. Boy, I read an editorial in one of the newspapers over the weekend that said that most Americans can't understand complex, uh, complex political issues like the Chinese student revolution, huh? Let's take a quick survey, all right? Not just, just by applause. How many think the cause of the revolution is the intellectual bankruptcy of Marxist ideology? <laughs> yeah, all right. How many think it was caused by Leninist revisionism? Okay. And how many think the Chinese students are just embarrassed to be led by a guy named Dung? <laughs> Tell me about the American people. Now, here's something impressive. One of the Chinese leaders met with Vice President Dan Quayle last week, which I think was a good idea. No, this is true. I mean, if there was ever an expert at avoiding a war in Asia, Dan Quayle is a man to see. <laughs> and President Bush starting to crack down. He said in a speech this week he wants a tougher death penalty. <laughs> now, a tougher death penalty. I mean, huh? is this possible? I mean, what do you do? Put a thumbtack on the electric chair? Ow! Ow! <laughs> Been a busy couple of days. You know, the president, the vice president, and the speaker of the House have all been traveling over the weekend. As you know, Bush flew to Rome. Uh, Dan Quayle went to the Indianapolis 500. And Jim Wright, I think, took a slow boat to China. Yeah, so... <laughs> and drugs are William Bennett. Says he wants to get the streets back from the drug dealers within one year. You know, I'll be happy to get the streets back from the Jehovah Witnesses and the Amway representatives. Gotcha. <laughs> and Sirhan Sirhan denied parole again this year. Boy, I really thought he was going to make it this time, you know. Hey, he had that terrific job offer some, from Jim Wright, you know, so that fell through. So. <laughs> oh. And Panama's uh, Manuel Noriega in the news again, ladies and gentlemen. You know, they're having trouble finding a place for him to go if he has to step down. And, uh, although it's starting to look a little bit better. Today, Malibu announced they'll trade him even up for Martin Sheen. So that was good. <laughs> what else is in the news? Last week, some environmental protesters dumped oil in the fountain outside the Exxon corporate headquarters. Yeah, well, this is true. And Exxon said they should have a cleanup plan by mid-July sometime. <laughs> been following the trial up there in, Cal uh, up there in uh, Alaska, around? See, here's something interesting. According to Captain Hazelwood's file at Exxon, he was considered an underachiever. 
Well, which is pretty lucky for us. I mean, if he'd lived up to his whole potential, the Pacific Ocean would be filled with oil. <laughs> oh, on a sad note, here's something kind of sad. The wife of James Brown pleaded guilty to possession of drugs. See, that's an interesting theory. See, instead of trying to get James Brown out of jail, I guess you'll just wait a while until the whole family's in there with him. You know. <laughs> How about that woman who spent 131 days in a cave with no human contact? You read about this over the weekend? Sure. Actually, I think she was starting to go a little bit batty. Did you see the footage on the news? The first thing she did when she came out of the hole was see her shadow and went back down for another six weeks. So, <laughs> how about, uh, how about the race? You all seen the Indianapolis 500 yesterday? Huh? That was an exciting race, boy. In fact, one of the fastest cars was almost disqualified when they tested the gas and found traces of Ben Johnson in it. Yeah, so that, uh, actually, 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 the most embarrassing moment of the race happened about halfway through when the entire field was passed by a 16-year-old kid in a Chevette trying to deliver a Domino's pizza, you know. <laughs> and last but not least, sadly, CBS has dropped Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Now, well, you know what it is when they cancel shows? They're so mean, you know? They're so cruel the way they broke the news. Did you see them on the news there? They put suction cups on Vincent's feet and stuck them on the window of the unemployment office. <laughs> your priorities straight. See you later, alligator. Eight years after their first battle, two fighters resume one of boxing's great rivalries. Now they step into the ring again for the long-awaited rematch. This time, the war is on. Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy Hitman Hearns go to battle on June 12th at Caesars Palace. Ladies and gentlemen, Budweiser presents the main event. Let's get ready to rumble! At A Day and Night Heating and Engineering, it's preseason savings time on Coleman Air Conditioners and Heat Pumps. Before your old air conditioner or heat pump loses its cool, install a new Coleman Air Conditioner or Heat Pump now. You've seen the light. Now feel the comfort. A Day and Night Heating and Engineering has been family owned and operated for 25 years, offering 24-hour service. For a free estimate, call 254-1515. 254-1515. Welcome, everybody. Hope you had a nice holiday. Actually, well, it is, a, it is Memorial Day, so we should say thank you to all our people in the armed services and those kind of things. Not really a happy holiday, but, well, is it? I guess it is, but it's also a day of, well, saying thank you. So thank you, I guess. Anyway, speaking of thank you, there's Doc Lemon Tree, very pretty Severance in there. That's kind of a yellow pants. I saw that car you drove to work in today. Did you get that out? No, that's an American car. That's, that's a 32 Packard. That's, that was uh, Fred's first car, actually. <laughs> I tracked that down. Are you here for uh, this weekend, Doc? Are you off somewhere? Uh, no, I'm going to be staying home the next few days. I'm well, you are very lucky. Next weekend, trying to find you. Well, I, this, well, I'm here all week, actually, which will be fun. And then uh, on the third, I'm at the Ottawa... Congress Centro up in uh, Canada, which should be fun. Then the Sands Hotel, and then the Baltimore Performing Arts Center, and then at Wolf Trap. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, 
Uh, oh, this is something that's kind of interesting. You know, this is a book. You probably, we've done this before. This is 101 Reasons Why The Tonight Show Is Better Than Sex. Can you get any shot of that? <laughs> well, this is kind of interesting. You know, uh, let me see, let me. You know, we, we, we've discussed this before. Uh, we've done research and we found out of the possible 300 million people that watch The Tonight Show, as many as maybe 299 million of them watching the show, but the other million are often doing something else. So <laughs> this is kind of, a, I guess, an ad for the show, why we feel The Tonight Show is better than sex. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. The Tonight Show is better than sex because we pause every few minutes, which allows you to go to the bathroom or get a snack. <laughs> Oh, the Tonight Show is better because if we promise to continue after two minute break, we continue. <laughs> uh. The Tonight Show won't fall asleep on top of you. That's certainly not. <laughs> and uh, I think it's okay if your kids walk in on you while you're watching The Tonight Show, huh? Anybody mind that? If you run into your ex-spouse at a party, you don't have to listen to, come on, let's watch The Tonight Show just one more time. Uh, come on, baby, what do you say? <laughs> and if your spouse gets mad at you, you don't have to hear, that's it, no more Tonight Show for two weeks. <laughs> if you're a parent, you don't have to panic when your kid asks, Dad, uh, tell me about The Tonight Show. Uh, if you're a girl, you can watch The Tonight Show with every boy in the class and not worry about them talking about it the next day. If during the show you accidentally yell out the name of a different talk show host, we won't mind. <laughs> Actually, we will mind, but that's fine. Uh, you'll never see TV specials like Men Who Can't Watch The Tonight Show, today on Geraldo. <laughs> if you bring your special friend from college to your parents' house, you don't have to hear what? Watch The Tonight Show in this house, not under my roof. Okay. You'll never have someone say to you, look, I don't mind watching The Tonight Show with you. Just don't tell anybody at the office. <laughs> How about that? If The Tonight Show is better than sex because you can talk on the telephone at the same time you won't be asked, hey, what's going on? Are you okay? Hey, do you have asthma? <laughs> ah, ah. If you check TV Guide, you can find out exactly who's going to be on The Tonight Show, which is, that doesn't always happen. <laughs> You won't be distracted by the sound of moaning, except during the monologue, of course. <laughs> See, I like that one now. You can watch on any equipment you have. New widescreen TV, Walkman, little portable. You don't need a big entertainment center. <laughs> huh? Tonight show is better than sex because you don't have to listen to excuses like, we seem to have lost the picture. <laughs> I don't understand. This set is usually pretty good. <laughs> The Tonight Show is 100% safe. Even if you believe in casual viewing, the only doc you'll ever see will be Severinsen. <laughs> if Rob Lowe had watched The Tonight Show with that girl, he could have saved a fortune in legal fees. <laughs> you can watch The Tonight Show every night with a different partner and the worse you get is ice cream. You can even watch The Tonight Show with your first cousin. <laughs> it's legal. <laughs> oh. The Tonight Show is better than sex because you never have to worry that tonight, the Tonight Show is really a cop from the Vice Squad in disguise. Well, the band seems overly concerned about that one, yeah. <laughs> TV evangelists don't have to worry if they're found watching The Tonight Show. <laughs> if we experience technical difficulties, you only have to wait a minute or two for us to continue, not tomorrow night. <laughs> and the best thing about The Tonight Show, everybody finishes at the same time. <laughs> makes new cheese trio the cheese lover's burger cheese 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 three cheeses two flame broiled patties new cheese trio for a limited time burger king amazing cheese. harry if you don't want to end up in court you better send that child support i'm calling about your son grover you better send money his ski trip's over send the money now you dig we won't make our next gig. 
To send someone money fast, come to Western Union. We'll make sure it gets to any of our 10,000 locations, usually in 15 minutes or less. Cruising! Western Union, the fastest way to send money. My son and I went off to photograph the great outdoors. Then we looked for the Kodak Color Watch Seal for great developing. And now we have two views of natural beauty. My view and his view. The Kodak Color Watch System. You're going to thank me for it. When people expect things from you, it keeps you on your toes. Hi, I'd like to make a new connection. I don't know, are you sure it's going to be OK? You got to continually prove to everyone out there that you're the answer to the problem. Don't worry, we'll take care of it. Sure, we can take care of that. Oh, thank you. That's the spirit that's going to get you there. That's how you build trust. When you're feeling kind of blue, I tell you what you do, you just uh, smile. And things are gonna get better, Mickey and Donald and you. You just uh, smile. They'll pick you up when you fall down. They'll make you smile when you start to frown. Mickey and Donald and you. Mickey and Pal's adhesive bandages bring back the smile. Smile, smile. fan of my first guest. You know, when I used to wash cars in Boston, she, I used to go see her and I would sit in the front row and I'd look at her and she'd always ignore me and never say anything to me. So I'm excited I'm going to get a chance to talk to her tonight. This is her new album. Well, first she'll be appearing at the Sa Santa Barbara County Bowl on June 25th and at the Wilton Theater in Los Angeles on June 30th. This is her latest album, Nick of Time. Please welcome Bonnie Raitt. <laughs>
you. I used to sit in the front row, but you would always ignore me. If I'd only known. See, you always look at the handsome guys, and I have to sit in the back with my mechanic friends. Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on the road all the time. Now, you have some huge bus thing, is that? Yeah, yeah, we're on tour on a tour bus, one of these custom-made things with bunks and TVs and bunks home and away from home. Yeah, is it really is that fun on a bus? Well, for me, I like to, uh, you know, when you're out for six months at a time, it's kind of nice to have some place to hang your clothes and not have to pack every day and have the airlines lose your luggage. Oh, yeah, and a bus. What could be more like home than that, hey, really? Hey, me, well, me and six guys on a bus. That's a, that's six a guys on the bus, really? All those guys, most really? of them. Really? Those guys? You travel with those guys on yeah, the bus? Yeah, it makes laundry real essential, actually. I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, is that fun, traveling with guys? I mean, is it... Yeah, I have two brothers, and I really like uh, being on the road. Yeah? So I have a song on my album called The Road's My Middle Name. And I, I guess I must like it. I've been doing it for 20 years. Yeah, but don't, wouldn't you like to have another woman on the bus just to kind of... No way. <laughs> I guess not. No. I'm just thinking, but you're probably right. Now that I don't I think they're it. wise would either, actually. Huh? No? I'm no. safe. You know, they yeah. go, oh, it's just Bonnie. It's just Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> little do they know. Just sit around guy talk all the time. <laughs> yeah, it gets a little uh, guyish, you know, after a while. Yeah, you know, the like guy talk. Yeah. Football, baseball, basketball. Do you remember, now see, I'm probably gonna embarrass you now, but I remember. I knew that. No, 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 but see, I, no, I go way back with you. See, you don't even remember me. I would stand in line, I have an autograph from you, oh. from like when I was in college. Do you remember the blender thing? Do you remember yeah. that song? Oh. <laughs> see, I remember that this song. This guy goes way back. That's like it's the true. worst song you ever wrote? Or one of the first songs. <laughs> well, I would think it's a song you're probably embarrassed about. But yeah, yeah, I am embarrassed about... in it. And in fact, there's a bootleg tape of this song that I performed on a live radio broadcast in Philadelphia years ago. <laughs> And I wrote this song for a friend of mine. I was a takeoff on these old double entendre songs, blues tunes, and it's called Let Me Be Your Blender. I can whip, chop, and puree. <laughs> whip you to a jelly, let me chop you up today. And it went on from there. A to fine, the fine worst song. Worst lyrics. Oh, fabulous and song. And I wrote it as a joke, and then people started to yell out, Bonnie, you know, play the song, and they still do it now in Japan, any place I go. But in Japan? Yeah, they go, Brenda, Brenda. It's, it's like a blue leg tape. You know, I started getting billed as Bonnie Blender Rate, so I started Bonnie doing Bonnie Blender Rate, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a low point. And then, of course, the Vegematic came in, which pretty much put that out. Of <laughs> yep, so it was kind other. of a one-joke thing that I cut yeah, off really yeah. early, and now, because of this, I'll probably get more requests for it. Oh, no, please, if you see her, ask for the song, Thanks. please. Ask for it I'm by name. <laughs> you know, I saw your dad in the hall. He's here, huh? Yeah. John Rate. Yeah, I'm real proud to have him in the audience, although Isn't it makes me nervous. Does it make you nervous when you're dead? Well, he sure. works on stage sometimes, doesn't he? Yeah, he comes out on the road. He, play, we, he was doing a show in Cleveland, and I was in Minneapolis, and he flew in so we could have a little family reunion with my older brother, and came out and sang Oklahoma with my band backing him up, and of course stole the show, as he always does. Oh, that's he, neat. Well, he's yeah. a terrific guy. Does he, ever, does he have a bus, too? I mean, it'd be a shame if your two buses collided somewhere. Oh, it would be rough. It would be rough. Well. When he's out with a show, he does, he does have a tour bus, yeah. and we've crossed a couple of times. Ah. And you going to do another song for us now? I sure am. This is not the Blender one, no. No, no, this is a different one. Something from the album? Yeah, it's called Love Letter. Okay. Oh, we'll do it after commercial. All right, Fred is waving hysterically. All right, we'll do it and this we'll come. That's commercial. That's commercial? All right. It's, it's that finger there, the Fred, that threw me. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Once you hear it, it's Bonnie Ray. Once you hear it, you got to get near it. There's a whole lot of nothing. So delicious, Planters Nuts are one irresistible snack. There's a whole lot of nothing going on. Planters. To the women of Saint-Tropez, protection is a delicate matter. Now, Bain de Soleil creates Protecteur Gentil in SPF 2230. Ultra sun protection, gentle to even the most delicate skin. For luxurious protection, never at the expense of beautiful skin. Indulge in Protecteur Gentil. Protection is a delicate matter with Bain de Soleil. Bain de Soleil. To prove how long Rain Dance Car Wax lasts, just add water. Rain Dance, the longest lasting protection you can buy. We are gathered here today. You'd expect this Panasonic Omni Movie camcorder to shoot in daylight. If anyone believes this couple should not be married, let him speak now. You might expect this Panasonic camcorder to shoot in room light. 
Let him speak now. But what you don't expect is that it can shoot by the light of one candle. And it's VHS. Let him speak now. Camcorders that do the unexpected make Panasonic just slightly ahead of our time. It's been said that these days, mechanics need a degree in engineering to repair automobiles. The fact is, Buick Regal was named Easy Maintenance Car of the Year. That can mean less time in the shop, less money out of your pocket. Get the facts. Buick is better. And now, get 2.9% GMAC financing, or depending on the option package you choose, up to $1,500 factory cash back on Buick Regal. But hurry, this offer is for a limited time only. See your Buick dealer today. Tonight on Late Night, Joan Rivers stops by, boxer Mike Tyson, and a down-home recipe from Kim Williams. It's an earthworm done in garlic. Yeah! And I think tonight, we have perhaps the most exciting hour in American... Then on later, Shirley McLean goes out on a limb with Bob Costas tonight. When your camera clicks, think Dominix, because this week we'll do double duty and give you a second set of prints absolutely free. That's right, a second set of prints for every original roll of color film developed. Plus, we transfer home movies to videotape for just eight cents per foot, free tape included. And for professional photo help, call our photo hotline at 1-800-53-PHOTO. Get the picture, get another one free at Dominix. No one knows quality and value like we do. an adjustable mortgage work who pays closing costs how much home can i afford everyone has questions about home buying and during american home buyer days the century 21 system can help you get the answers there'll be seminars open houses and this free home buyer's guide title insurance it's right here let your local chicago area century 21 office help guide you to your new home the Midnight Caller tries to cool down a robber, Tuesday at 9. Before you do your next song, can we introduce your dad from the audience? Sure. Hi, Hi Dad. John Ray, there he is. There he is. Handsome leading man. What's the song you're gonna do for us? We're gonna do Love Letter. Love I'll Letter. I'll sing it directly to you, too. Oh, okay. You're gonna sing it directly to me? Oh, you're okay. Married, gonna go do it now? <laughs> Once again, ladies and gentlemen.
Yes, and we'll be right back after this message. Thank you. I breached new heights in my BVDs. I'm even more striking in my BVDs. BVD brand underwear. Whatever you do, that extra comfort helps you do it better. I became a TV heartthrob in my BVDs. America, do it better. Do it in your BVDs. At my age, I've done just about everything in my BVDs. First came the Magic Kingdom. Then, the incredible Epcot Center. Now comes the new Disney MGM Studios theme park. The Disney MGM Studios theme park at Walt Disney World in Florida. Home by Hemphill, the builder of quality homes since 1926, presents two carefree communities. Bartlett on the Greens offers dramatic single-family homes on the Villa Olivia Golf Course. Golf, tennis, swimming, and skiing right outside your door. Priced from $144.9. Village Commons of Mount Prospect features luxury townhomes with basements and fireplaces starting at $174.9. Hemphill homes feature award-winning architecture by New Horizons and offer high-efficiency gas heat. For a free brochure, call Hemphill at 394-0030. It's me. Don't forget the research tapes for tomorrow's meeting. It's me. Don't forget the research tapes for tomorrow's meeting. When you need a reminder, give yourself a call. It's a good business practice no matter what business you practice. Next guest is a very talented comedian. Uh, well, I'm excited. This is her very first time on The Tonight Show, which is fun. Thursday, I mean, uh, Friday, she'll be at the University of Georgia in Athens. Uh, please welcome Carol Leifer. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's great to be here. As Jay mentioned, I am from New York. <laughs> It's one of those cities where one second you're driving along in a very ritzy, very elegant area, and then like two seconds later, you're in a very different neighborhood where you're doing the subtle elbow car door lock move. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I flew out over the weekend. Geez, you know what my favorite part of flying is? You ever pass the stewardess as you're leaving the plane? You hit that minefield of goodbyes. Bye-bye <laughs> now, goodbye, bye, bye-bye now, bye, goodbye, bye, goodbye now, bye, goodbye now, bye. <laughs> Now, whenever I travel, I always like to keep that seat empty next to me. I found a great way to do it, okay? When someone walks down the aisle and says to you, is someone sitting here? Just say, no one, except the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so LA, everybody's in such good shape out here. I'm not into working out, folks. I don't care, I'm sorry. Basically, my philosophy is no pain, <laughs> No pain. <laughs> yeah, although I did once buy that uh, Jane Fonda videotape, Barbarella, and I... <laughs> no, I bought the workout tape. I couldn't keep up with her. She's like Gumby in this thing. Okay, lie on your back. Throw your legs over your head. Now run in place. <laughs> women in the old days. Pioneer women, you know? They didn't have to go to spas. I mean, women in the 1880s weren't like, you know, Marge, I find that hoeing <laughs> is so good for the upper arm. <laughs> really. You know, the other day, I'm up uh, plowing, right? <laughs> so the oxen broke free. 
drag me through the mud on my face. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you, the next day, my skin had such a glow. <laughs> to have out for women. It's so embarrassing. Impulse body spray. Have you seen this stuff? They'll be surprised if a man you never met before suddenly gives you flowers. Mm, great perfume that attracts moonies. <laughs> <laughs> so I also got to check out Beverly Hills since I've been here. Visited a store called Neiman Marcus. <laughs> Little out of my price range. Jeez, I always walk in a fancy store like that. feel like every woman is looking at me like... Is Penny's closed? <laughs> I like to work in a store like that, jeans and a t-shirt, go over to somebody. Yeah, do you tell them what floor tires are on? <laughs> you know, I really love the women who shop there. You ever notice that these stores like they all talk like this? <laughs> like with the mouth down to the knees. It's one of them like, oh, Betty. <laughs> Pop up a Betty, Betty, Betty. Betty, Betty, see this blouse. Comes in bone, too. I'm dying. <laughs> I don't know, I always picture these women in bed with their husbands going, Harry, <laughs> get off of me. <laughs> Thank you, I do that a little too well, but thank you. <laughs> so on the social front, I'm uh, single. I was married, but it didn't work out. It was a mixed marriage. I'm human, he was a Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'll tell you another thing right now, folks. My ex, that son of a, he tricked me into marrying him. <laughs> he told me I was pregnant. <laughs> now, nah, just kidding around, I, I don't have any kids. Well, at least none that I know about. <laughs> I'd like to have kids one day, though. I want to be called mommy by someone other than Spanish guys in the street. <laughs> about being single again, you know, after already being married, was definitely, you know, getting out there and getting physical with men again, you know, because you sleep with the same person for a number of years, you know, sex becomes like a well-choreographed mambo after a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you do that to me, two, three, and I do that to you. <laughs> somebody new, it's awkward. You're like, oh, I see dip two, three, <laughs> touch that thing, and twirl. <laughs> Now, did you just do a, sh uh, a special on a boat? What was that, now? Yeah, I did a Showtime special. On a boat? On a cruise ship, yes, <laughs> the yuck boat. And the, now, what is that like? Do you have that woman screaming, if they could see me now, is she running through? <laughs> Little Kathy Lee. Oh, is, she that? is that Kathy Lee? Yeah. Oh, all right. No, actually, um, I did it, and we stopped at Martinique. That was one of the stops. Oh, the on island the does? Yes, the island of Martinique. But you know what it is? You go away to a foreign country, the last thing you want to see are here or other people that remind you of being home. You know, so here I was, beautiful French outdoor market, and then I'd hear like, hey, Tony, buy it. It's like $2 or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you work a lot out of it. You were in London. Did you do some shows there? I was in London. I did my first show in London. No, is that, is that, I, I mean, I worked there and I found it a little bit. Strange. Did you like working there? Is it strange? Yeah, I loved it. But you know what? I traveled the weekend. There was that whole terrorist scare, and it was just horrible. The customs guys were all over, you know, asking those questions like, did you do all your own packing? Which is, you know, really stupid because, you know, come on, like most people, you know, I use Mohammed's packing service. <laughs> <laughs> We're single again, eh? Yes, Jay, yeah. we are single now, again. Is this gonna last for a while? Are you dating? Are you gonna get married? What are you gonna do? 
Well, you know what it is? I mean, it's slim pickings out there. I mean, you're married, you know, but I mean, for us single people, and when you're first single again, you're so optimistic at the beginning. I was like, well, I want to meet a guy who's really smart, really sweet, really good looking, has a really good career. Six months later, you're like, Lord, any mammal with a day job. <laughs> Standard drops just a little bit. There. Yes. All right, that's great. Very funny stuff. And uh, we'll be right back with Roy Blunt Jr. Right now. At the biggest bank in Ireland, from coast to friendly coast, they'll refund your visa traveler's checks if they're stolen or they're lost. Of course we can. So be off without a care and travel where you will, from McGillicuddy Reeks to Glen Column Kill. But if you lose that other traveler's check, you may be in distress while you're phoning for a refund. I thought you had the number. From American Express. Visa traveler's checks, they're everywhere you want to be. Give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball! You got a thirst. Give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball! You know what you need. Give me the ball! Fluids and minerals fast. Energy for hard-working muscles. Gatorade! Nothing better. Give me some of that Gatorade. Vital. I could move my right hand. Signs. I lost complete control of my speech. Real people, real lives. I would have taken the medication. No, I would have paid more attention to taking it. Topics vital to your health. I think I'm having a stroke. Dr. Barry Kaufman with a special report on high blood pressure and stroke. The best therapy is preventing a stroke in the first place. Your vital signs. Brought to you in conjunction with the Metropolitan Chicago Health Care Council. Your vital signs. Tuesday at 6 on Channel 5. Astronomers tell us there won't be a total eclipse in America until the year 2017. They are very much mistaken. This is the year of the eclipse. Introducing the Eclipse GS Turbo by Mitsubishi. Try not to stare. Humorist, a journalist, a sports writer, a poet, a performer, a lecturer. He's virile, strong, thrifty, trustworthy, all these things. He's a very funny guy. This is his book of essays and observations. It's titled, Now Where Were We? It's a great book, which I have read. It's terrific. Please welcome Roy Blunt, Jr. Journalist, sports writer, writer, poet, performer, oh. the whole bit, huh? And Viral, that was good. And Viral, I threw that in myself. I figured you'd like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So you've been out here for a month. Has it affected yeah. you? You look rested. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm from Georgia, and I live uh, part-time in New York and part-time in New England, and Southern California is just different. Mm -hmm. I'm down there. So, uh, well, how? How would you say it's different? Huh? Well, the one thing is that uh, people talk different out here. You know that. People, <laughs> people say, uh, how are things going? And when I was in Georgia, you know, I just sort of grunt or something. You're not supposed to say much. Up here, out here, I've started saying, somebody says, how are things going? I say, colossal, but we're not worried. Yeah. Colossal, but we're not but worried. worried. So you gotta do things on a big scale. Oh, I see. <laughs> but in, uh, there was a kid over the house where I'm staying mm -hmm. who uh, w spent the night and was gonna go to school the next morning and so got up to fix lunch for him. And he said, I don't eat sandwiches. I said, do you have any Thai chicken? Any <laughs> <laughs> Thai chicken? Thai chicken, that's the kind of thing kids eat out here, but the, the strangest thing I've seen out here is the, uh, you know, every, every part of the country, mm -hmm. there's some kind of uh, pest that's grown up around, you know, like right. in the south, it's kudzu. They brought in this... Kudzu? Kudzu is this wine, a line, a vine, I mean, that they vine. brought in to kill something, I don't know, they planted this vine to hold the keep the hills from falling apart or something. But mm -hmm. it just took over and took over the whole South. So now you drive down the road and kudzu is, is you can see kudzu devouring houses and Wasn't things like that. Wasn't that a Japanese film? That's a, yeah, that's right, kudzu. kudzu. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, other places it's gypsy moths or in right. New York it's roaches and gunfire and things, I don't know. Right. 
But, but in Southern California, I find out, it's escargot. Escargot, escargot. is a problem? I, look, I looked over and I said, what is that? And they said, that's a snail. It's a French snail. They brought in French snails for some reason, and they all got out of hand. I don't know. So that they're French. You haven't seen French snails all over everything? Gee, I've been here about 14 you years, and well. I, I must admit, <laughs> what, what happens to them? Do they... They, I, what I don't understand is how they got out of hand. How do snails get out of hand? You know, I can see how it tells you. They must have had a really lax snail keeper. Who was I would guess, yeah. He's probably getting paid by the hour. I know, he's sitting there, and probably his wife said, see that snail over there is getting loose. And he said, no, no, don't worry about it, it'll be all right. And the next, next day, thing was, you know. Was, uh, next day it was six inches further away, and he said, no, it'll be all right. The next thing you knew, there were snails all Pretty over everywhere. All Escargot. I was so it's like having a, a plague of caviar, or something, you know. It's, <laughs> or, or, or sushi, uh, you know, hordes of sushi coming down. He's beating sushi off all the time. You know how sushi got started, don't you? I, I have no... I, I thought I knew how sushi, sushi got started, but you probably have a better reason. Go ahead. There were a bunch of uh, very smart... Japanese merchandisers mm -hmm. over in uh, marketers over in Tokyo, and they were planning things to sell in this country. They said, and they said, let's start a whole new line of restaurants in, in America. A whole, you know, and they said, okay, what will we serve in them? They said, well, fish. How about fish? And they said, great, fish would be good. And they said, how will we cook it? And one of them said, you know what we could do. <laughs> and they, it worked. They got yeah, away with it. You know, they, yeah. they, they don't eat raw fish in Japan. They just uh, brought it over. They don't, but they, I guess they like it. They like it deep fried with that crispy yeah, batter. Like everybody else does. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew there was something. Yeah, now you right. see, I would have thought. I, I had not expected you to talk about snails and mm -hmm. giant uh, kudus. What were those things? Kudzu. 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 I, I would have thought you would be in a fitness thing. I figured you'd come out to L.A. Well, do the health thing. Uh, yeah, I've never been. I believe in a certain amount of health, but I think that too much health. Too much is, is a bad health. thing. You really. <laughs> Uh, Good health and moderation. Right. My mm -hmm. feeling about jogging, for instance, is mm -hmm. uh, what Abe Lemons, old uh, basketball coach, once said. He didn't jog because he said, when I die, I want to be sick. <laughs> yeah. There's no point in that. Yeah. Trust me. Trust me. You know, you make a lot of, a lot of sense, stranger. <laughs> now, what, uh, what made you decide to stay a while this time? It's obviously affected you, I well. can see. How, how long were you here, a month? I've been here a month, yeah, it seems like it. I've been, well, it I came out like here. <laughs> no, I came out here, I, have, I want to uh, say that I came out here to stay at the home of the very provocative and funny uh, star of uh, television and movies, Annie Potts. Ah. And, uh, which is... You're staying at her home? Yeah, staying at her home, which leads to a big thing, which is, uh, you know, I've been going out publicity to her selling my book, and people said... Uh, now, people are going to ask you about Annie Potts, you know, about you know, mm -hmm. your personal life and things. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I was told, and I said, yeah, hey, great. You know, I wanted to be asked about that. Because, see, usually people ask humorous, terrible things. You know, you go out and, and they'll come up to you being interviewed and they'll say, that story you wrote about how the chickens got in your underwear. Is that true? Is that true? You know, <laughs> you, know but you didn't even write anything about how chickens got right, in your underwear. Right, but right. You, can't, you can't deny that. You can't right. say, I don't know what you're talking about. You have to make up something about chickens in your underwear. Right. <laughs> So I get tired of that kind of thing, and I just would love for somebody to come up to me and say, uh, uh, you know, this uh, provocative and uh, very lovely uh, star of television, uh, by any chance, uh, is there any kind of romance going there yeah. or something? You know? But I was told that if I was asked that, yeah. the cool thing to do is to deny it. Well, let me ask you, I say, now, uh, I, I read in one of the sleazeball tabloids that uh, <laughs> apparently you're seeing uh, any, any pots, is it, from Designing Women? Here's what you're supposed to say. Okay, go ahead. You're supposed to say, we are just friends. Oh, you're Quakers. You're friends. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but you're staying in her home, you Well, said. see, yeah. I, and I mean, I'm sure so, she appreciates having a reputation dragged through the mud. In the exactly, country. exactly. So I, but there's, I've got a reputation, too, you know. I, mean, uh, I, I wouldn't mean, worry about stand, it. Yeah. <laughs> now, is this, this is not, this so, is not something all, the, all humorists don't stay here when they come out to the coast. Well, no, I, yeah, I would like to somehow make it's the distinction you. without... So, so I think what, you, what I would like to say is I've been trying to develop the right answer, and so I've tried some things like uh, we're, you know, we're just friends, and I can explain these Polaroids I have in my wallet. I see. <laughs> now, would this be a case of your plausible deniability that you talked about? Yeah, before? well, you know, deni I've always been interested in deniability. Uh, I've always wanted to deny a lot of... This is the first... Uh, 
you know, about Andy is the first thing I ever wanted to admit. And now I have to deny it. But the, the, in politics, <laughs> in politics, they um, are always denying things, and there's right. a principle of plausible deniability, mm -hmm. which means that if, so, for instance, say your administration has traded arms for hostages. All right, theoretically. Yeah, say, I, I don't think that kind of thing is possible, so, but let's right. assume. Not, not in this day and age. We're so. on TV, we can examine Yeah, that. right. You, somebody asks you if that's true, you say nothing could be further from the truth. Further? Nothing from further from the truth. And then you retreat gradually as they come out with more and more evidence, you can say things like, well, maybe some things could be further from the truth than all of that. <laughs> Which I think is a, a good thing. Like so many things the government does, I think it's fine if the right to that is extended to every American. For instance, mm -hmm. say the telephone company calls you up and says, you, owe us, you haven't paid your bill in two months, you owe us $200. You could say, nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> and they say, now, uh, what do you mean by that? And you say, I think my words speak for themselves. <laughs> they say, uh, now, now, wait a minute, you have a telephone, right? Right, you have a phone. And you, you say, well, news to me, the first I've heard of it. <laughs> and that gets, that gets the telephone com company a little mad. And they say, um, well, now, wait a minute, we're talking to you on the telephone. Ah. That's your telephone we're talking to you on. And that's where you really have to hang tough. You have to say, that's your opinion. <laughs> Headache. Three states in four days. I need a vacation for my vacation. But I took two Excedrin, and I know I'll feel better. <sighs> Two Excedrin, and it's gone. When you want extra strength headache relief, take Excedrin, the headache medicine. I'm ready to go again. Nancy, we better fax this to the international divisions right away. This year, thanks to AT&T's worldwide intelligent network, more than 60 million faxes will be sent to over 185 countries. Nobody else lets you fax so many places with such speed and clarity. We've taken fax to a whole new level. <laughs> Happy birthday, boss. <laughs> Here's the laughter. Yes, I want to thank my guests, uh, Bonnie Blender Rate. This is her oh, album right here. Oh, it's called Nick of Time. Uh, Carol Leifer, very funny stuff. And you've got your uh, cable special, and you'll be at the University of Georgia. And uh, Roy Blunt Jr., the book is now where were we? And uh, I guess the next book will have all the facts about any pots yeah, and what's going on. Good, good. good. <laughs> and uh, I'm here all week, you guys. Join me tomorrow night. My guests will be. Heavyweight champion Mike Tyson steps into the ring today on Late Night with David Letterman. And later, Philip McLean joins Bob Dawson.